Next, I'd like to talk to you about a concept known as Thevenin equivalence. Uh, and we'll start this with Thevenin's theorem. So Thevenin's theorem states the following. Um, so any circuit, and we'll say any linear circuit, which for us, this means uh, it's made of voltage sources, current sources, and resistors. So pretty much everything we've learned about. Um, I guess I'll write that. Um, is equivalent to a single voltage source and a single resistor. Uh, when measured between any two points. Actually, instead of measured, we'll say connected at. Let's see what I mean by that in a second. All right, uh, so, so we'll, we'll move on to an example of this. I'll say, I, I will say right now, Norton's theorem states exactly the same thing, except, except instead of a single voltage source and a single resistor, it is a single current source and a single resistor. Um, and one can convert between the two the way we've discussed previously. Okay, so it turns out this is kind of related to this idea of ideal versus real voltage sources that we talked about before. So just without doing any math, just in words, um, we see that if we have a voltage source and we connect different resistances to it and flow different amounts of current from that voltage source in real life, uh, we get different voltages that we feel. And that's because the voltage source isn't perfect. If it's being asked to flow too much current, its voltage, its voltage dips some. Um, and this is true of any linear circuit between any two points. And we can express this the way it dips by like replacing that circuit with a resistor and voltage source um, in series. Let's do an example, and I'll and I'll show you what I mean by it. Show show you what I mean by this. So let's say we have a voltage divider that looks like this. So we have a voltage source that is 12 volts, and we have and we have two 2k resistors in series. And let's say we're using this voltage divider as a voltage source for something else in our project. So like we have a 12 volt battery, but we really want six volts. So we connect this to, you know, to some other, to some other circuit as a six volt source, right? And I'm saying it's a six volt source because we can see these two equal resistances in series are gonna give us you know, at this point, they're going to give us half of the 12 volts because we have six volts across this and six volts across this. Um, okay, so we can, <laughs> so this, this doesn't prove the equivalence. This just shows, you know, we, get, we can get six volts out of this. Uh, but my claim is that this circuit, when, when connected between these two points, this circuit over here can be totally replaced by, you know, a single voltage source and a single... Uh, resistor in series, and anything we measure over here is going to be the same, whether it's this whole circuit or that single voltage source. So that's, um, I'm not going to prove this. Um, I am just going to do an example that hopefully convinces you that, that this is true. Okay, so to start, let's imagine that we can connect different resistors at these two points. Sometimes in the Thevenin stuff, these two points are often called A and like point A and B. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to name them. Um, so let's imagine that we're connecting a resistor to this circuit. So this is the circuit we want to know the equivalence of, and this is some resistance we've added on there. We'll call this the load resistance. So in the case of the voltage divider, if we have this, you know, six volts connected to some other circuit, this is representing how much current that circuit is asking for or something like that. Okay, so for different values of the load resistance, we're going to feel different voltages between points A and B. So some of these are really easy to see. Um, for example, if the load resistance is 
infinite, meaning that we have an open circuit here. Um, our circuit is just this simple voltage divider, and the voltage between points A and B is our same six volts. If we make this load resistance zero, meaning we replace it with a wire, um, then that is, you know, forcing points A and B to be at the same potential. We're shorting that out, and the voltage between A and B is going to be zero as well. Okay, uh, there are a couple other ones that are easy to do that we will um, that we'll look at. So if this is a 2K resistor, then we have 2K in parallel with 2K. You can do a little math and show that that gives you a 1K resistor uh, equivalent for these two in parallel. So our voltage divider, instead of being two and two, it becomes two and one. So this voltage is one third of the total, right? 1K over two plus one equals three. So that means we end up with one third of 12 volts, which is four volts. And lastly, you'll see why this one is important in a little bit. If we replace this load resistor with a 1K resistor, um, you can do the math and show that the voltage we get out is three volts. Um, in short, you know, if this is 1K, we have a 2K and a 1K in parallel, that gives us two thirds of a kilo ohm and two thirds of a kilo ohm in series with two kilo ohm gives us a voltage divider that is a factor of four. Um, so anyway, you can, you can check that for yourself, but if this is 1K, uh, we can just use simple circuit analysis to show that this has to be three volts. Okay, so why have I done all this? Okay, the reason is we are claiming that this is equivalent to something that looks like the following where we still have points A and B, and we're still connecting our load resistor to that, but we don't have this more complicated thing over here. We just have a single voltage source and a single resistor. So the crazy thing is, this is true. It is equivalent to this, no matter how complicated things get on the left, you could have a circuit that takes up the whole, the whole wall and it still is equivalent to this as far as points A and B are concerned. So what is the value of this voltage? What is the value of this resistor? So that's the only uh, tricky part of the, the Thevenin equivalence. And we can actually see what those are from, from our little table we made, because if, um, if these two have to be equivalent, then we should be able to use these numbers looking at this picture to figure out what R and V are. Okay, so what I mean by that is if our load is infinite, so we have nothing connected here, then we know that the voltage between points A and B should be six volts, which means that, you know, if we're not getting any current through this resistor, there's no drop across it. So our voltage source here has to be six volts. Done. Uh, and the other, the other thing we can do is um, if we put a resistor here, you can, you can, you can convince yourself that this is true. Uh, if we put a 1K resistor here, then we know that this voltage between A and B should be three volts. Well, three volts is half of six volts, which means between these two resistors in series, we should have a voltage divider that splits by a factor of two, which means this resistor should have the same value as that resistor. So this should also be a 1K resistor. So no matter what we hook up, we should have um, we should have this circuit being equivalent to this circuit. The only thing we didn't use was 2K and four volts, so let's just you know show that. So if this is a 2K resistor, then we have 2K, we have a voltage divider with a factor of 2K over the whole series resistance, which is 3K, so that's two thirds of six volts, which is four volts. So at least we've shown that this circuit is equivalent to the above circuit for, for all of the values we showed. And in fact, it, it, it has to be true. It has to be equivalent for any value of the resistance we put there. So why is this useful? Well, um, if we were making a complicated circuit and using it as a voltage supply and connecting a load to it, it is useful to be able to model it as a single voltage source and a single resistor. Um, and it's especially useful if you wanna know 
what a circuit looks like with multiple different loads. So for this particular circuit, it isn't too bad to solve, but you could imagine if you wanted to find the voltage between A and B for 10 different values of this resistance, um, there are more steps to find that voltage for this circuit than there are for this circuit, right? This circuit is just a one step voltage divider kind of thing. And certainly if this was a big complicated circuit and you had to do a few values of, of, of this voltage for different load resistances, that would be a, you know, a, a challenging problem to solve it for 10 different resistors. That's 10 different like big hard problems you have to solve. Or you can solve a big hard problem once convert it to this equivalent thing, and then we have just a simple voltage divider, no matter how many values the resistance we're plugging in there. So that's why the, the Thevenin equivalent is useful. Um, this also, you know, <laughs> this will come back um, later on in the semester too, so it's not just limited to what you're seeing here. There's, there is more to the Thevenin equivalents also, so it's, um, <laughs> there's more exciting stuff about it to come, but hopefully this gives you um, at least some idea of, of why this is, uh, why this is important.